Gold is for the mistress, silver for the maid, copper for the craftsman, cunning at his trade. Good, said the king, sitting in his hall, but this I know, iron, cold iron, is master of them all. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Hoplite channel, and you are here to see something completely and totally different. Kelly Works Flint Edge Double Bit Axe Restoration, WTF. Yes, WTF indeed. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've posted, and there's a reason for that. Uh, work, hobbies, distractions, etc. Yeah, but we're here today, and I am posting a video uh, to document the Double Bit Axe Restoration of a Kelly Works Flint Edge, a true temper, for my brother-in-law's birthday, for Kyle, yeah. So this is uh, for him to watch if he's ever bored and wants to see how the ax uh, he is currently in possession of got made. Um, or if it breaks, we can look back and say, oh, there's where you screwed up and that's why it happened. But uh, yeah, I figured I would do this for a change of pace. I felt like doing something with my hands for a change and not just yakking like I always do. So yeah, this will be an ax restoration video, my first one, this is my first hang. Uh, ever and uh, yeah I miss I miss using these tools like this you know there's something about just holding something you know of this kind of design and uh, there's the uh, center of gravity huh. about three inches back um, yeah and just you know picking something like this up and, and just you feel like yeah you know this is this is Americana this is this is what probably what it, it should feel like when uh, you pick up a quality item and you're ready to just do some work. And uh, I missed that feeling, so I felt like doing this uh, for that reason alone. But anyway, uh, how about a little history lesson before we get to uh, the uh, meat and potatoes of this? So the Kelly Works, yeah. Um, the Kelly Works Flint Edge is an ax, and a very storied line of axes with a very storied company. So uh, the name Kelly is from uh, a man who was uh, born really uh, early in U.S. history, uh, William Kelly. Uh, 1811 is when he was born, and he was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He studied metallurgy at Western University of Pennsylvania, which is pretty impressive because at this time, you know, how many colleges, universities were there in the U.S., uh, especially ones that taught metallurgy. And he was a bright guy, uh, very, very bright, very smart. Uh, it was later determined many years later, that William Kelly actually discovered a process for refining iron using air blasts. But at this time, it turns out that another famous individual, Henry Bessemer, was working on the exact same process. And Bessemer, uh, who was English, got the credit. So yeah, Kelly, it turns out, discovered it first. He later secured a US patent for this uh, process of refining iron with air blasts, but everyone refers to it as the Bessemer process. Yeah, so unfortunately for Kelly, he got beaten to the punch by Bessemer as far as discovering it publicly, but we know Kelly, uh, an American, right, right here in the States, uh, he found it first. But nevertheless, uh, he decided to go into metalworks uh, and making tools and implements, uh, uh, household and, uh, general use, and in particular, axe making. And it was determined um, that the first Kelly axes made in quantity began in Louisville, Kentucky, and that the Kelly Manufacturing Company, which later became uh, his son's company, moved to Charleston, West Virginia. And Charleston, West Virginia is probably where Kelly Works is most, um, most famous and most well-known because you will see a lot of vintage axe heads, and maybe I'll put a few, especially the Black Raven. The Black Raven is like Holy Grail axe head level. Like, oh, I think a Black Raven axe head now, if you go on Etsy or eBay, if you can find them, they're hundreds of dollars. And it's just a, a steel metal head, but it has this really cool embossing with the crossed axes and the Black Raven. It's just, they don't make stuff like that anymore. Like when you get something from the store, there's a sticker slapped on it. There's no embossing. There's no engraving, stamping. It's just, it's cheap. But the Black Raven uh, was made in the Charleston, West Virginia um, manufacturing 
uh, plant. Uh, and it, at this plant in Charleston, Kelly Axes became uh, famous in the United States for their craftsmanship and for the durability. So much so that they were purchased by a larger company, the American Fork and Hoe Company based in Cleveland, Ohio, and that would have been 1930. So fast forward from 1811, 1930, you know, Kelly Axes are famous, American Fork and Hoe buys them, and the Kelly Axes are then transferred to the True Temper division of the American Fork and Hoe Company. So a lot of people are wondering, yeah, Kelly Works, I get the name and everything, but why True Temper? Well, True Temper was the division of the American Fork and Hoe Company that made all sorts of different steel tools. And the True Temper division is where the Kelly Axes were transferred for manufacturing. So full name, the True Temper Kelly Works Flint Edge. Cool. So yeah, I, w I was looking through the um, old catalogs. I think there's a, a website called Yesteryear Tools. It's actually pretty neat. It's where I got most of this information. And by the way, I'm cutting out a lot of history here because you came to watch the axe get made, not you know history lesson on, on the guy who made axes. But um, this particular axe head um, I got from a gentleman off of eBay. It was in decent shape. It was probably still usable. But, you know, it was a good starter project for me to restore because it didn't need a whole lot of work. It pretty much needed to be taken, you know, 40% of the way back to where it was, you know, like new again. So uh, the Flint Edge uh, in this particular model was most likely made uh, under the True Temper label um, between 1955 and 1965, um, around thereabouts. So, yeah, this was... Um, Quality American made steel, and um, yeah, I think it's really cool. And I actually bought like three or four more, so I might I might have developed a habit already. But anyway, um, without further ado, uh, we will cut now to the axe restoration itself. And uh, yeah, hope you uh, hope you enjoy. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, everybody, got it right here. Came in the mail last night. This is gonna be Kyle's axe. This is gonna be, well, half restoration. I don't see a lot of pitting. This is mostly patina. Yeah, good profile. This will take a really good edge. Uh, that's, yeah, it's gotta be rehung because you got these gaps right there. Don't wanna swing that too much. But yeah, this is a uh, this is a classic. This is a, a True Temper Kelly Works Flint Edge. Yeah, they don't make these like they used to. Yeah, there's a quick shot of the booze collection, by the way. Yeah, so this will be Kyle's axe. When I re uh, hang it, I'm gonna do uh, some work on the head. And this will be my gift to him on his birthday. Yeah. For, uh, for all the free wood he, he tossed my way. This will be, in case the grid goes down, he'll have, <laughs> he'll have a way to uh, split more wood if I uh, come by to grab some. But yeah, this is it. Good looking X. Michigan profile. You got a thick bit on one side and a thin bit on the other. One's for chopping, one's for splitting. This is a good working X. All right, we'll see you next time. Hopefully this is all in view. So I got the axe head right here, and uh, we're gonna cut it off with this um, this little saw, which uh, I think is pretty cool. I just picked this up. I forget what they call these things, but it's basically just like a bow, and it's got this really thin um, uh, cutting bit, and it uh, it fits on these little these little tension turn turners, and um, yeah, it's actually very handy for really fine cuts. So when I hang the ax and I actually have to cut off the excess um, of the handle for the new handle, uh, I will also use this before we put the wedge in. Okay, here we go. Woo. 
Uh, that was a little miniature workout. Okay. So yeah, you can see as I as I started cutting there, these these splits started to actually show their show their true colors. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really I don't really regret that. I I don't think this this handle. Yeah, well, you can see yeah right there. There's this uh, there's this split happening on this ring. Um, what's worse is. <laughs> Now that I notice it, this grain, this grain is not terrible, but you can see that it's sort of, it, it arcs this way. Um, you want as much grain as you can vertical with the ax head. So essentially you want the grain of the wood to follow the ax head. This arc, it's not bad, but um, it's not ideal. And you can see, that this this uh, this crack right here is starting to work its way around basically the the same pattern of the ring that the uh, the wood would have been um, the original wood this handle would have been made of so yeah oh well I was really hoping to use this for a project but I don't think it's gonna have much life uh, left in it okay let's uh, let's drill out the uh, the remainder of the handle. If we can get this axe head uh, completely off the wood and cleaned up. All right. So here's the problem. Uh, you've got this metal wedge in the middle here of the eye. And it is, it is in there really, really good. Um, it is holding everything else together, too. So this, this thing absolutely has done its job. <laughs> uh, and then some. Uh, I broke off one of the drill bits, and um, you can see I've had to drill one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least nine holes, uh, and then <laughs> at least seven more on the back here to try to create enough gaps to get this axe head free of its handle, and it is still fighting. So I am going to keep drilling, and if I have to drill out every single fiber to get this thing clear, uh, that's what I just might have to do. I tried to drive it right there with the, uh, the punch, and you could see the punch start to dig into the metal wedge, and it was going practically nowhere. So I'll keep drilling, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Wow, my God. Um, incredible. Impossible, almost. Uh, this metal wedge <laughs> will not give up. I have pounded on it. I have drilled, as you can see, all the gaps in the eye that you see, I had to drill and then hammer through with this here wood chisel. Yeah, there, it's, yeah right in there, uh, it's everywhere. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. It's incredible, quite frankly. Um, yeah, this metal wedge is, uh, it's made of adamantium or something. It will not give up. And I am drilling and pounding and chiseling. <laughs> it would not let go. So wh wh whoever hung this ax before, like, I don't know, maybe they intended it to be like in there forever because unless they welded it, and I don't see any welding, uh, you, I don't know how you can possibly put this thing in here any more snug. It must have been in here for centuries. All right, we're going to keep drilling, and we are going to get that SOB out. All right, praise Jesus, for he is great. All right, whew, good God. I feel like I just exercised a ghost out of this thing. Yeah, the True Temper, Flint Edge, Kelly Works. Oh, the old Flint Edge. There it is, there's the eye. Everything is intact. I don't see any cracks. There's just some <laughs> some pound marks I had to uh, administer to it. Yep, so I think we're good. Let's hold up to the light here. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're doing good. Yep. Okay, yep. 
axe head is fine, but here's the culprit. This step wedge, this massive step wedge. Jeez. Look at the size of this SOB. It's like, that's bigger than a quarter. Yeah, what does this say? Wedge Devil? Yeah, tell me about it. There you go. Wedge Devil. Yeah, I told you I exercise a demon. Look at the, look at that. Had to literally pound on this thing like I was trying to, you know, drill for oil. Incredible. All right, but success. It only cost me a drill bit. That's great. Uh, okay, well, now we're going to get to uh, some of the more fun stuff and refinish it. I don't know if I'm going to leave this patina on as nice as it is. I think I'm going to polish her up good because it is bound for a new owner. Yeah. Okay, stay tuned. All right, everybody. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see myself. Okay, so we got the, um, the axe head is in the, uh, in the vise right now. I am going to put an uh, angle grinder to it, and uh, we are going to uh, try to polish this thing up. Uh, I think I'm going to paint the, um, the center section, and I'll leave the, ex the extremities of the bits nicely, uh, highly polished. And I'll probably take some fine grit sandpaper and uh, polish those up to a mirror if I can, as close as I can. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, let's get to the angle grinder. These gets a little loud. That's how we're looking so far. This side's not done yet, but this side right now is taking a nice little shine. Keep going. Side one is done. Looking pretty good. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's side two, and you can see the uh, the three point two stamp is coming out. Pretty sharp now. Pretty cool. Three point two pounds, although probably going to be less than that considering how much metal I took off. All right, we'll do the bottom, and then we'll be done. Liking it. I'm liking it. I'm probably going to take a file to sharpen the actual bits themselves, but it's looking good. Yep. Still got some character marks on it, which is cool. Looks a little rustic, but it's it's got a polish. All right.
Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're, uh, we're gonna paint today, as you can see. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Northern Virginia. It actually warmed up, I think it's around like 45 or 50. Not bad for uh, February, considering we had snow about uh, six days ago. Anywho, uh, yeah, so I got the, uh, the double bit here taped up and it's propped up uh, with this piece of wood on these other two pieces of wood. I'm gonna try to uh, give this a quick once over. I'm gonna do probably three coats, two at least. But yeah, we're gonna do it right here. Uh, Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel and Regal Red. So uh, yeah, Kyle, if you're watching this and this, uh, this head needs to get touched up, this is the brand and that's the color. Yep, and it's, uh, it's a pretty color red. I think it'll fit. Uh, now I know what you probably are thinking. You're saying my, uh, to, the, uh, to the camera right now, well, dude, it looks gorgeous the way it is. I mean, look at that. It's the raw metal, but it's got that kind of, that aged brushed look. It looks pretty badass the way it is. And I agree. Uh, I could leave this raw and I think it would look just as cool. And I might regret this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I made up my mind to, to at least paint the center, so the, the, the parts you see that are taped with uh, painter's tape, that'll be raw and polished. And I think it'll look good nonetheless. So um, yeah, like I said, I might regret this, but we'll, we'll see. All right, uh, tune in to see uh, the paint job finished. Oh, and I have this little side gig project here, a uh, present um, to me from me. It's a, it's a Collins, I also cleaned her up. And uh, I think I'm gonna paint uh, this Collins uh, red as well. So we'll see how that comes out. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so we got, um, we got uh, coat number one drying on these two ax heads. And yeah, I think it, it looks pretty cool. It's got that um, really like, I guess, yeah, regal red, if you wanna call it, or fire engine red and it's gloss, uh, I think it looks pretty dang sharp, uh, pun intended. So yeah, um, in the meantime, we're going to use this little guy. And this is a Beavercraft draw knife that I picked up for a song. It was very affordable, but it's a great little tool. And what we're gonna do is we're going to work on the handle. So here's you know the pommel or the um, the butt I guess you would call it, and I like I like where it comes to. I mean it it feels decent in the hand, but I think if I steeped or yeah steeped is that a word? I don't know. If I made the butt here a bit of a more um, I guess you would say uh, more uh, in uh, a gradual uh, uh, from instead of a gra I can't talk a gradual incline. A steeper incline I think it would come to the end much more securely in the hand I'm not gonna take a whole lot off because like I said it looks pretty good as it is and it feels decent but um, yeah I'm gonna make the the angle here a bit more steep so that when you swing the downstroke it locks into your hand at the very end a little bit more securely so yeah we'll get to work on that while uh, these guys are are drying okay Stand by. Okay, just doing a quick sanding of the handle. This will be our double bit handle for Kyle's axe. The grain's not bad, it's about 45 degrees, maybe a little bit less. Um, yeah, we'll just do a real quick sanding. I already started it right now, as you can see, so we'll just give it a quick once over. Okay, oh, <laughs> nothing to it. Next step, I think we'll do uh, paint for the head. Stay tuned. Okay, uh, several minutes later, we are down, I believe. It's a little bit off kilter there. You can just see it ever so slightly. We got some good curl on the bottom here. I don't really think I could take it much further. It's sitting right down on the shoulders of the handle. There's some good curl there. Yeah, so when I take this, um, when I take this to get hung tomorrow, we're gonna probably try to take the wedge down as far as she will go and then cut it off right 
on top nice and smooth like. So I'm trying to get a really good seamless fit. And then I'll probably uh, introduce two metal step wedges as well to take up any extra space. But yeah, uh, there it is. I think we're ready to go tomorrow for the hanging. Stay tuned for that tomorrow. Over and out. <clears throat> okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, yeah, so we're down back here in the bunker in the basement, and uh, we're going to hang the axe. I've got the uh, axe head right here sitting on the handle. I believe it's down far enough. We got our wedge, so yeah, let's let's get some glue on the wedge and we'll pound her home. Okay, this right here. If I can get that off. Well, it's, there we go. Anyway, I was like, if it's stuck, we're in trouble. Okay, a little for that side. Smooth it out right here. Get it on all the corners, all the edges. I'm gonna have to wash this off my finger before it starts to harden. And then yeah, we're gonna hang this tonight. And then by the time we wake up tomorrow, it should have cured and dried, and then we'll be ready to make the cuts. So yeah, here we go. Right here. All right. Got our wedge. Got Kyle's axe. I'm going to fit it right in there. Yep. Okay. This is starting to mushroom. Starting to mushroom really well. Should be good. Yep. Yep. And we'll cut it off. Like I said, tomorrow once it sets, we'll cut it off right there at the corner. But yeah, right now this is sitting really good. Like I said, we got some good curl on the bottom here. So yeah, it's it ain't going nowhere. Okay. Tomorrow we do the cuts. See you then. nice there we go okay that looks like the crack that was in the top of the wedge basically finished cracking as it meet as it met the handle so that's great so there we go there's our wedge okay handles next again okay we're back from about a two week hiatus. <laughs> Gotta finish this ax project here. So um, yeah, I pounded in a, um, another bit of wedge uh, that I cut off to uh, fill in this gap, but I got some more, I don't know if you can see it too well, some more gaps here on the sides, little one there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, um, a few metal wedges here that I got these three and we're gonna fill in these metal wedges on top probably gonna put this one down the center and these longer ones uh, on the flanks at an angle so yeah I think that will eat up the remaining space it'll probably crack the wedge that I have in there right now actually you can see a little daylight right there down my hand on the bottom there yeah I don't like that at all um, but um, it's still it's in there pretty firm but with these wedges uh, it should make it even more so okay let's put it in the 
put in the vise and we'll, we'll pound some of these wedges home. All right, we're back here down in the bunker, AKA the laundry room. So I uh, took a Dremel and I pre-cut some cuts for the uh, step wedges you see here. Yep, the one in the middle is pretty thick. I, yeah, th this wedge is definitely going to crack when these three go home, but you know, we'll use plenty of wood glue to seal it up. But uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get all three in there. Uh, definitely gonna get at least the middle one uh, to seat. Okay, coming up next. All right, we got wedge number one right here for the center. Let's see if we can get this to go. Okay, seated right there. Got a trusty hatchet for pounding the wedge. There you have it. Three step wedges. You can see right here where actually this part of the original wedge started to move down. So yeah, that thing is on mighty snug. That, that ain't coming off for nobody. All right, give that a little sand, some more Watco oil, and then we'll be good to go. Next time, uh, next part will be the sharpening. And this thing is already pretty sharp as it is. I just, I realized actually after finishing, you know, the metal with uh, the angle grinder, I put a pretty wicked edge on it as it is. So we're gonna take a quick polishing stone and then we'll take, hey, you can't see me. <laughs> we'll take some leather strop uh, and we'll strop the sides uh, for the cheeks and for the final blade. And I think this thing will be ready to go. And then maybe we can get actually um, a demonstration if I can find some wood to cut. But it's March, so I mean, I'll have to look around. But it's looking good right now. Okay, peeps, we're back. And we got the handle up on the vise, and we're gonna treat her with a little fire. Get it nice and rustic looking. And it'll actually help harden the, uh, the handle a bit um, as we treat it. Okay, here we go. Nice and toasty. Yeah, how does that grab you? Looks pretty cool. All right, we'll give it a quick sand and then we'll oil her up. Okay, a healthy amount right there. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh boy. Oh, it looks it looks great. It looks even better than I thought it would. Yes, sir. -y. This is gonna look really handsome when it's done. And everybody recommended linseed oil and I kind of you know when I first bought this Watco this Danish oil stuff right here I thought well you know it's it's good I've heard good things about the, the, the Watco but everyone said linseed you know linseed oil is the way to go linseed oil and I was like okay well you know the Watco was available I, I couldn't find any linseed and I'll tell you what I'm kind of glad I went with the Danish oil the Watco because it, it it looks amazing
before. But man, I'll tell you, this this looks ridic, ridiculous, gorgeous, gorgeous color coming out of this hickory. Yeah. Yes, indeedy. All right. So yeah. Uh, there we go. There's our double. You can see the color. Like I said, God, I'm almost inclined to try and keep this. But uh, yeah, my first hang. I'm hoping this is a good working axe and you know serves you well for many years to come. All right, cool. We'll see you in the next one. All right, we're in the kitchen because that's where I sharpen my axes. I don't know about you. No, I actually just had to take a, a batch of cookies out of the oven. That's not a joke. So, while I'm here and they're uh, cooling, I figured I would um, sharpen the eggs. We got our little whetstone here. Putting a little water on the whetstone so it's wet. Makes sense. And I was saying earlier, this axe, as I chop my table in half, this axe head is already on a very good edge. I mean, you can see right there, that's a pretty good edge for that side. And same for this. If you can see, it's gonna focus. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the, <laughs> those step wedges are smoked. Yeah. And then there's yeah, this side. So yeah, we're just going to take the whetstone and we're just going to give it a couple passes. Take it to the leather strop, see how that works. All right, we've got the axe head uh, in the vise here on the floor. Got this leather strop, which you can see I've already been using. And yeah, you were just gonna smooth out the sides that we, uh, we took uh, the angle grinder and then the uh, whetstone to. And yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see what kind of edge we put on these, uh, these bits. sharpness test. Standard military grade pad paper. Plastic. Good clean cuts. Uh, T-shirt. See how this holds up. That's sharp. Yep, yeah. all right, let's try the other side. <laughs> if you ever need to cut off a t-shirt, you can use the ax. All right, paper test again. This side might actually be sharper than the other one. Plastic. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> That's sharp. Yeah. Maybe too sharp. But I honestly got that from angle grinding. Uh, the whetstone and the stropping, I, I did that for maybe two minutes. The angle grinding, I don't know how, maybe just dumb luck, but this axe just took an edge like crazy. So yeah, there she is. The double bit flint edge Kelly works, vintage axe. Probably circa 1955, 1965, somewhere in there. Yeah, uh, pretty cool. Um, I was saying earlier that I was thinking about keeping this for myself. But yeah, this will be for Kyle. This will be for KG on his birthday, which I think is coming up here in the next uh, month. So hopefully I can get home and uh, surprise him. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Okay, peeps, this video is taking about a month. I should have got it out last month, but I've been busy and uh, I wanted to test Kyle's axe before I gave it to him. And it's been a beautiful day today. I want to say it's about 68, 70 degrees, which is awesome for March in uh, Virginia. So, uh, some guy on Craigslist was giving away free wood, so I took him up on it and uh, grabbed the whole load. And we're going to split some with Kyle's axe before I before I give it to him as a gift. Um, it's poplar wood, and uh, I've never split poplar, split oak, split hickory, you know, cherry, beech wood, but never poplar. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, but it's, it's plenty sharp. It's sticking in the wood fine. Um, it doesn't have the best splitting profile, as you can see from the other videos. You could probably tell that as well, but um, it should be good enough. So let's give it a rip. Finally got a split. There you go. That's what the inside of poplar looks like. It's tough wood. I'm not giving a full downstroke because I don't want to. I got actually a brick like kind of tile pattern below this, and I don't want to hit the accent on the, on the brick. So I'm kind of going slowly, just methodically. There we go. It's poplar wood. Yeah. It's Kyle's axe. Okay, I told you guys I was gonna do this and I did it. So I made my own. This is the Kelly Perfect. This is the True Temper. Yeah, I had to do it. So yeah, it's a beauty. Uh, I'm really, I'm really digging it. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, and Buck and Billy Ray told me this. He said if you go to hang the axe, and when you go to hang with the mallet is when you put the head uh, on the eye and you pound through, you have to be careful because you can crack the bottom of the handle. And that's what I did. Um, you'll notice this ax, as opposed to Kyle's, doesn't have a pommel, right? I screwed up. So there's Kyle's with the correct pommel. And there's mine. So what I had to do was I had to cut off where it cracked, which was right about here on my ax. And then I took a Dremel tool and I cut these grooves so that when I gripped, my hand had something to hold on to at the end. Otherwise, it would be smooth and flat in my hand. So I just kind of, you know, it looks cool and everything. And But that was completely by accident. Uh, this is definitely, in my opinion, a better way to go but uh, this will suffice. So yeah, um, here's the two ax heads. And there's Kyle's with the flint edge. It's definitely a better chopper for sure. And then you got mine, which is the perfect, also more of a chopper profile, but it has a thicker convex shape for splitting. And it, uh, it's doing a good job. 
Also here, this is what poplar looks like, a little cross section here. Uh, very straight grain wood, um, yeah, very straight grain. But I will tell you this, it clings to itself. When you split this, the fibers, they almost like squeeze as you split. As you're going through, I can feel the wood that it just split, almost like self, trying to self heal around it. So it grabs, it splits nice and evenly. Like, you know, here's the split from this section. But, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a joke. Uh, it's, it's not easy wood to split. Okay, some more bonus cuts <laughs> coming up. There's the Collins. Again, not the best splitter. Finding that poplar, once you split it once, if you get it in half, if you uh, cut the half, cut the round down the middle, the remaining splits almost are like a quarter of the effort. It's weird. It's almost like once the round knows it's been split once, it just it lets you split the rest. But that first split, whatever it is, uh, it's a workout. All right, folks, that's it. That's the movie. Here we are. Yep, so the, uh, the True Temper Kelly Works Flint Edge, all finished up. I got the sheath on it. Sharp, uh, sharp as a razor, as you could see in the last segment there. Yep, so this will be coming home with me, um, hopefully in about a month, uh, for Kyle's birthday. So happy birthday, Kyle. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, get some use out of it. Uh, before I go though, I want to give two shout outs uh, to two other channels in the YouTube community. Uh, Buck and Billy Ray Smith out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Crazy Canuck, and uh, 13 Crows Axe Re Resurrection out of Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, everything you saw me do, uh, I learned by watching these two channels. Uh, 13 Crows, uh, I think all he does is straight up axe restoration. Buck and Billy Ray does a bit of everything. I mean, the guy, uh, he treetops, he bucks wood, he rebuilds vintage axes, he splits wood. Uh, yeah, he's a tree man, he's a logger. So uh, this, this guy's channel is insane. He, he's putting out videos every day. Uh, and I think 13 Crows is a relatively new channel, uh, as mine is. But uh, yeah, I wanted to say uh, thanks to these two guys uh, for watching them do what they do. It pretty much uh, gave me the roadmap. So yeah, uh, so yeah, Kyle, when I get back, uh, we'll get you this, and uh, I've been working on uh, the single bit Collins right here. You might have saw it in the first couple segments. So yeah, if, uh, if I get a good edge on this, uh, maybe we can uh, split some wood uh, this, this summer, and uh, yeah, let's put these, uh, put these things to good use. Anyway, I uh, appreciate uh, everybody hanging in there and uh, watching the restoration video. Uh, who knows what the next video will be. Maybe it'll be more of this. Maybe it'll be something different. But, uh, yeah, I figured I would, uh, I would take the channel in a completely random direction for this one. I think I did that in, uh, in good fashion. Uh, anywho, if you're liking the channel, uh, if you like the Axe Restoration video or the other videos I did, uh, feel free to share it with family and friends. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Uh, if you saw me do something right, if you saw me do something wrong, which I'm sure I did, uh, any suggestions uh, would be helpful. Because, yeah, I got two uh, Kelly Perfect axe heads uh, with the beveled cheeks. Those are cool. Uh, I'm going to uh, rehang those. And I have a plum double bit as well. And I have a Verona uh, boys axe, a two and a half pounder single bit on the way. I'm going to rehang as well. So, like I said, uh, I, I, I do one of these things uh, just, you know, for a goof, just to see if I'm any good at it. And then what do you know, I buy five more and now I'm, you know, a fanatic. That's just how I am. 
Uh, but it's been fun, and uh, it's um, it's good to do these things. You know, to work with your hands it exercises a lot of demons out of you. If you're bored, you don't know what to do with yourself. Pick up a trade, pick up a craft, uh, work with your hands, and just get your frustration out. Um, yeah, give yourself some fulfilling work to do, and it'll go a long way. Anyway, one more time, the Hoplite Channel. Happy birthday, Kyle. Uh, hopefully this axe gives you uh, years of faithful service if I did it right. Okay, till next time, and everybody, take care.